In the world of aquariums, good lighting is a must have. Your fish and plants need to survive and thrive. If the lighting's wrong, you could be facing stunted plant growth, stressed aquatic life, and even disease. But with all the technical terms and units of measurements floating around, it can be tough to know where to begin. But fear not, because I'm here today to clarify things and help you create the perfect lighting setup for your aquatic friends. So sit back, relax, and let's learn all about Kelvins, Lumens, PAR, Lux, and nanometer wavelengths. First up, Kelvins. It's a unit of measurement that describes the color temperature of light. The scale ranges from 1000 to 10,000 Kelvins, with each range representing a different color of light. In aquariums, the Kelvin scale helps you choose the right lighting for different types of plants and animals. For example, 5000 to 6500 Kelvins gives off a warm white light that's similar to natural daylight. This is great for planted tanks and brings out the color of your natural aquatic life. On the other hand, 10,000 Kelvins produces a cool blue light that's perfect for reef tanks as it mimics the lights of shallow ocean waters and promotes coral growth. Next up, nanometer wavelengths and PAR. Nanometers are units of measurement that describe the wavelength of light. Different wavelengths affect living organisms differently, so it's important to understand them when setting up an aquarium. In this context, the 400 to 700 nanometer range is considered the photosynthetically active radiation range, or PAR, because that's the range of light that plants use for photosynthesis. So PAR refers to the amount of light in the 400 to 700 nanometer range that plants actually need. So when setting up an aquarium with live plants, it's important to consider the PAR levels to ensure the plants receive the right amount of light for optimal growth. A PAR value of 15 to 30 micromoles is considered low light, suitable for slow growing plants like java fern and cryptocorines. A PAR value of 30 to 50 micromoles is considered medium light, suitable for plants like Amazon swords and water wisteria. And a PAR value of 50 micromoles or higher is considered high light, suitable for fast growing plants like Hygrophilia corymbosa and Rotala rotundifolia. It's important to note that higher PAR values can lead to increased algae growth, and with medium and high light setups, you really need to add CO2 to support successful plant growth and balance everything out. Now let's talk about lux and lumens. Lux is simply a unit of measurement for illuminance, or the amount of light that falls on a surface. It's often used to determine the amount of light in a given area. Lumens, on the other hand, measure the total amount of photons emitted by a light source. So in an aquarium context, lux is slightly more useful because it measures the amount of light that actually reaches the surface of an object. But this can be affected by factors like the distance between the light source and the surface, and the amount of light absorbed or reflected by other objects in the environment. So whilst lux can help determine the amount of light being emitted by a unit, ultimately it is the quantum measurement of PAR that you want to consider when choosing a light for a planted aquarium, since this is a measure of the amount of light radiation that a plant can see in order to photosynthesize. Basically, I tend to think of lumens and lux as being a measurement for humans, and PAR being a measurement for plants. But wait, you've told me all about the merits of PAR, and yet I never see a PAR rating listed on the box of my aquarium light. And yes, this is the conundrum. The available light radiation has so many variable environmental factors that you are unlikely to see many manufacturers willing to list an output which would be hard to reliably and consistently measure. There are, however, a handful of companies that release PAR reports, such as Jahiros. But for all other light units, we are back to those slightly less relevant Lumen and Lux measurements. Although not the best measure, they are at least consistent outputs. And most people suggest that low light is around 10 to 20 lumens per litre, medium light is around 20 to 40 lumens per litre, and that high light is 40 lumens per litre and above. And so finally, the dinosaur that is a wattage. It used to be a common unit for measuring the energy consumed by a light bulb, and you will often see people reference wattage per litre or gallon. But with LED lighting becoming more prevalent, referring to wattage is becoming outdated. LED lights consume less energy while still providing high brightness, making wattage a less reliable measure of light output. However, of course, you will still see wattage listed on the box of any aquarium light because this is how much energy the unit will use. So in the aquarium world these days, wattage is not the most important factor to consider, but it's still good to know. So there you have it. 
kelvins, nanometer wavelengths, par, lumens, lux, and wattage. With this knowledge and an understanding of the pros and cons of lumen, lux, and par for aquarium plant growth, you'll be able to make a more informed choice about your aquarium lighting. Take care, and I'll see you soon.